Hello, hello, hello. Still connecting to chat. I think the audio this time will work fine. New splash screen. New splash screen featuring Jetstar Japan, Jetta, the Red Panda. Because I felt like it was time to make a bit of a change. This stream is not sponsored by Fritz Cola, although I have just received another shipment of it and thank mm. thanking them the Belgian beer company for being able to order that kind of stuff here because otherwise I will be missing this sorely. Trying to see if anybody joins before I start so that it's not completely boring for everybody else. In the meantime, I am dealing with one small thing. Since when does Amazon Basics not have free delivery? Ah, well, that's going to be simple and easy to fix eventually give me a few more moments i just need a very simple short cable yeah this one will do fine we have a half meter yeah half meter will do fine Some of you may have noticed on Twitter I was saying how I'm setting up a wormhole between here and my mom's network so I can actually get stuff tested without having to go silly over it. I'm going to do that with the NanoPi um, Neo Free because that seems to be the easiest thing and the cheapest thing I can find that has enough network, like gigabit speed network and also I still get something that is packaged into a plastic case because trying to get my mother to just get the um, Raspberry Pi into its proper um, proper thing is like going to be crazy, like I'm not going to ask her to try to assemble that kind of stuff it just uh, it's not going to work um, so instead I'm going to have her delivered the um, NanoPi free with a USB-C power supply like very easy actually I may just get her uh, well, okay. Anyway, that's stuff that I'm doing separately that has nothing to do with this. I see there are at least a few people in. Welcome, folks. I'm going to go ahead in a second. So now that you all have noticed the new splash screen, I can get to that. So last time we got stuck onto this, um, where this particular test, the G1 test, was crashing. So let me re-execute that again. Did I need the, the end for this one? No, I don't think I do. So if I just... Yeah, it was... My test. Oh yeah, it's missing the ampere. Uh, I need to do that from... Yeah, I need to tell it what the unpaper binary is. Um, yeah, let's run the test. So last time I was trying to figure out why this particular parse multi-index is failing, because it was outright crashing. And that didn't sound right, uh, like something was definitely wrong with it. Um, And I'm still not sure what the cause of it was exactly. Um, 
I would like to find a better answer to that. It's interesting nowadays Amazon tries to give you like special co warranty cover blah 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 for pretty much anything you try to order including cables and power supplies still running the tests yeah that's the other thing it needs to get faster This takes way too long. Still waiting. If you hear random fans running behind, it's also because I have the NAC currently trying to compress the image for the nano a nail free but I've been running it. it's a 64 gigs as micro SD card that's the smallest I had at home sorry how about you go no I've crashed um, it's the smallest I had at home because I usually use the micro SD cards for my camera so I have a bunch of 128 gigs 256 gigs um, but they don't have anything smaller than 32 gigs, which is usually okay, except in this case, like, I don't want to send 64 gigs to my mom. I'm going to just compress it down before transferring it. Zero free works very well for that. But, where were we? Yes, this thing crashes. It definitely crashes when doing the no processing one. So let me reproduce this as a single call. So if I do build the air on paper, the V overwrite, no processing one, test on GSRC001, and then build um, the test result for PDM. Oh, did I pass something wrong? Oh, overwrite. Yeah, it's segmentation fault. If I remove the overwrite part, still segmentation fault. If I remove the dash V, still segmentation fault. And if I do V, still segmentation fault. And like, okay, no processing one is enough to crash it. So that's good. I can reproduce it much faster than nearly everything else because like, it's no processing one. If I do no processing, it finds, it just says that it requires an argument. If I give it an answer in an argument, it crashes. Okay, so we have something to go by. Uh, no processing. It should also be dash n. So what happens if I do dash n1? It errors out. If I just do dash n, it also does not do the right thing. So let's move on. What is the problem here? Is dash n not doing anything that it should be doing? Case n of the arc. So if I do the whole thing instead of I do dash n one, it does the right thing. E, that he doesn't crash. Do just dash n. It actually tries to process this. It doesn't do the right thing at all. What's dash n in the list? Uh, 
Okay, so this is get up long only, which is annoying. So man get up long only. For those of you who never used get up or get up long, yeah. Those are horrible interfaces because you pass these magic strings that say it's what the short options are and like yeah it, it's awful which means essentially that over here when I say no processing somewhere um, here and I say no processing requires an argument and then I say no and and I forgot actually what it stands for but the n should be like what the alias is but that's completely unrelated to the dash n as it appears here, um, so the struct option is the struct option even documented here. Might not me, uh, maybe later. Yeah, there you go. Struct option um, has args flank is no so as args is required argument one. Um, the flag is how result of returning a long option is flag is no. Uh, get up long returns val yeah okay so if flag is null and it is then it will return val um, and the idea is that you set val to be equivalent to the short option character that you want to accept and then the string itself the upstring has a long list of things where it is Like that, it says what takes a argument or not, and I never remember how to parse it myself. So let me go for it. Ah, oh, come on! Probably that's not even get up. Do I need get up to one? Uh, opt string. Opt string is a string containing the legitimate option characters. Uh, two columns minus an option takes an optional arg if there is text in the current argv element. So here's where eventually I screwed up and I said that um, in the short version I said dash n takes an optional argument and then I said no processing takes a required argument and now the two things are not quite working the same way I don't even remember what the right one is so let me go and check for what I wrote in what I or Jens, Jens uh, wrote in the document so no processing um, do not perform any processing on a sheet except three posts rotating and mirroring the file so I am okay let me go on to a separate rant on this one for a moment do not perform any processing except and then it has a bunch of things like file that conversion or saving pre post rotating But this suggests that it should have always taken a sheet range. Because if there is nothing, it doesn't seem to actually do anything useful. So let me go back to where it parses it and see what it's actually doing. So optarc include multi-index. Optarc. Yeah, the command lines is fine, but the, 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 get, the whole get opt is horrible. Um. Yeah, there is text in the current argv element. I know, right? Um, like the, the column separated the, the, the opt strings officially. It's a horrible hack. 
I'm not so sure about the flags, the fine string stuff, to be honest. It works a bit better, but like it's also kind of global. And then you get this, oh yeah, you should not be using flags for libraries. Oh, we use the flags for libraries everywhere. Oh no, we don't have an easy way to access those libraries otherwise. So yeah, up to you. You can define and then in the libraries and go against what we tell you to do. And then it will work mostly fine, except when people will try to change something. And you're like, ah, common lines. Um, and that. Um, okay, so we were saying. Um, do, do, do. Yeah, the, oh, yeah, the op string can contain w followed by semicolon. Um, yeah. I keep saying that I posted that this needs to be replaced by a front end that does the generation. Um, but that generates a job description, a batch description, job description, how do you want to do it? And then have something that just says, okay, I need to do these things, I'll do these things. Um, but that's another problem. So, okay, places a point, places a button into the if such a character is followed by a column, the option requires an argument, so get up places a pointer to the following text in the rv element or the text of the following rv element in of dark. Two columns means an optional, uh, the option takes an optional r because it's an op, ah, an option takes an option, ah, ah, okay. Um, this text in the current rv element, do, 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 do. then it is returned in of dark, otherwise of dark is set to zero. Oh, so optarg may be set to zero. And clearly we've been doing this for a while. And like, so when you do this, it's set to zero. What does it happen when that's set to zero? If the optarg, because this is the optarg, is set to zero, it returns without doing anything. Well, it sets the multi-index count to minus one and indexes zero. And that's the ignore multi-index. Let's see what ignore multi-index does. Uh, but if it is, if it is not excluded by the ignore multi-index, what does that do? Okay, so unpaper dash n doesn't do anything. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, but but two errors. No, it actually does seem to do the right thing. Like, it, if you set dash n, it doesn't do any of the applying right, so it's working fine. So I guess that if that is no count is minus one, what does is multi index do? Again, all of this should not be done in C this way. This is trying to do object oriented programming in C, which is awful. Okay, yeah, so if multi index is all, everything is in is intended excluded. So obviously no processing is supposed to have an optional argument. Still awful. But Did I do the wrong thing? Yes. Oh, um. yeah, that's what I meant to do. Okay, so if I just do the no processing, 
Yeah, no input or output. Okay, this one is still not working. So, do, 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 do. Okay, so this worked. So if I do this, no processing. Looks exactly the same way. And if we do not in processing one, I get an error. If I was not processing equal one, which probably does the thing that we want. I get the segmentation fault. So let's go back to expect a required argument for this one as it was before, because I think that's what it was meant to be. Okay, and now no processing. I had one earlier that crashed. Yeah, this one crashes. This crashes on parse multi index one. Trying to set the ignore multi index at parse.c 287. So it's crashing here. So let's break parse.c 286 and run again. Okay, it set faults at the first first iteration through the loop. So either Wow, did we never test any of these in on paper? Like how did this even work? <laughs> okay, so let's take a closer look. This is this is S scan F. So it's scanning S1, which we know is fine. As percent B, percent C, percent MS. Do do let's create a new and S scan F M is a length modifier. M doesn't help. It is M dot seven eight five. Okay, so So S should be this so that a conversion and go S as much as a sequence of non white space characters. D matches an optionally signed decimal integer. The next pointer might be pointed to int. That's fine. So index is the pointer to int. And then C. Do I use C at all here? Yes, yeah, C. Matches a sequence of characters whose length is specified by the maximum field width, default 1. The next pointer will be a pointer to car, to, to car, and there must be enough room for all the characters. Now terminating null byte is added, and that's okay because the default is 1, which is what I want. And C is a pointer to character, which is this thing here. And like I'm just C is the character, and so ampersand C is the pointer to it, so that part is fine. And then S matches a sequence of non-white space character, 
The next pointer must be a pointer to the initial element of a character array. And is as to a point uh, so as to what is as to? It's not as to is just a uh, so ampersand as to is a pointer to a pointer of character. And if I remember correctly, that means that I'm trying to get it allocated. But I think pay me. Originally, the new C library supported dynamic allocation for input strings via the A characters. Oh, there you go. POSIX 1 2008 specifies the M modifier for assignment allocation. And if we're using C99, which we are, A is not accepted, new program should use a modified M. We cannot use it for percent %C to avoid the ambiguity of the percent %A floating point conversion specific. Okay. To use the dynamic allocation conversion specific, I specify M as a length modifier. So percent %MS or range and the color must free the return string so s2 is where this is going to go so this should be correct because i'm asking here to find an integer Oh, followed by a character. That's a mess. Because I'm looking at S1, so... Wrong shell, that's why. Yeah, I clicked it. So if I do no, that still doesn't work. That's same for one. So frame two. So this is doing the scan f and ISO C99 B scan f. It's a version that will support the percent m modifier. So that part is fine and it should be doing the right thing on the modifier. Opt arg is one comma two. So print. Um, sorry, I want frame four. I think yes. Print s one. Cannot be accessed. Um, that's interesting because S1 should be an STR dub of opt arg. And if I print opt arg, I get 1, 2. Yeah, so And this is trying to access what?
Yeah, it tells me that we cannot access memory at S1. But they should have duped one, so that should take. Why will the STR dub crash? Okay, let's try something silly, but let's print F and percent S S1. Let's force it to be Amazon compile. Oh gosh. Because it's implicit declaration of STR the is that including string dot age? What? Include string dot age car star str dub and it since clip C two twelve pod C source two thousand eight oh nine Why is that implicitly declared? Because I am including it. Okay, remove build the uh, on paper. Maybe some compile help. I want to actually see the, uh, the compile. I hope that P is enough for me to GCC obviously oh, just clean. Okay. Compile clean with two uh, oh, okay. I need to do it this way. A lot of it is deprecated. STD C eleven stdc11 but see the c11 include like does c11 include POSIX c source Future test macros. STDC eleven will produce the same output. It enables C ninety nine and C ninety five features as well. Yeah, that needs 2008-09-L C11 enables C99 source. Does C99 offset 
both exist, so it's 2089. go and google for it because now I'm lost mm -hmm. that's the same page we've seen past macros That's only for default source. I don't source. I don't care about that. Look for the C11 stuff. If the find C11 source, that's fine. <sighs> no. Okay, let's. And that, folks, is why you don't use freaking C for this kind of thing. What happens if I do this with... segmentation fault. lot of the format stuff that needs to be fixed but that's a different problem altogether mm -hmm. it's using GNU 11 for sure this time so let's see if that works oh look it works so this was crashing and I, I didn't just rerun the my tests. Um, this was caching because somehow asking for C11, which should be the latest and greatest C version like, to use for this kind of thing, does not define the STR DAP method, which just duplicates my string into a new string. You need to enable POSIX C sources for that somehow. Uh, which I expected C11 to enable, but it doesn't. And without that, you get an implicit declaration of STR DAP. Now, either because of all of the noise coming from a format or some other reason, I couldn't see any error or warning for implicit declaration of STR DAP. C implicit declarations return integer types, as in 32-bit integer types. 
for the Jubic integer types don't quite represent a pointer on modern 64-bit systems. Because of that, half of the memory address was truncated. And so I was running scanf on a string that I actually thought was just duplicated, and so I definitely it's valid, right? But it wasn't, because the pointer was truncated. And if you couldn't hear the sound effect, I just thrown something into the trash because that's how I feel about C after this, once again. Yes, I'm... Uh, I'm not suggesting that just because they are newer Go or Rust or whatever else are better languages overall, but pitfalls like these are just like why in 2011 is an implicit declaration still a thing? Look, the test passed now! Um, yeah, most of the tests take forever because they run a lot of things. I forgot what F1 does exactly. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. Yeah, F1 does the merging. Yeah, all the tests are very slow because they are actually running like they are running single threaded, like they are running. They're not running in parallel. Um, they're running in series. They are running single threaded because on paper doesn't have any multi-threading support, despite the fact that it could easily do that. Um, this is reading to like it could easily automate uh, it could easily multi-process part of this because like it's merging a two page layout into a single output page so what it's doing is taking two separate um, input files and just creating one output file for them and it should be able to do that at least with the coding of the two separate ones in separate threads of course a merge is not going to be um, Pytest parallel will be awesome. I haven't started with that because I wanted to finish all the tests. I'm just... The implicit declaration is a significant what the heck is going on. Let's see. Let, 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 let's just see how bad this is. So we know that that fixes it. Let's remove that. I'm going to remove build here again. And then I'm going to build here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, may as well build. Yeah, there you go. We create this. Duct tape will be perfectly fine for Pytest. Like, Pytest parallel will be a perfect duct tape for all of that. Um, running those in parallel is. Like, Pytest Py parallel is essentially the same make minus j free check. Like, yes, it will be an improvement. It will not be the greatest option, like on paper has a lot of low hanging fruit that she should be improved, but it will be something better. So if we just now compile this with dash b and I'm going to less through this and if I do implicit declaration of function as here dub. So dub implicit function declaration and in, like, why is why is int conversion just a warning? Uh, let's see if Mason has an easy way to set a single warning as error. No, that's not what I want. Um, that's a warning level. That's not what I want. Yeah. Compiler properties. Compiler ID. Yeah, I mean, as I said, C needs to. The C is a pain. Does a header exist? That's not what I want. Does a function exist? Does a structure container member has arg has argument? Yes. Um, 
Yeah, it's fine. Compiler has argument will do fine. So cc get compiler if but cc add argument error in conversion. How do I even do this? I don't know, but it's best. Let's start with this. And if um, if it does that thing, just add it. <laughs> That's default options. That's a project. Can I add stuff on the default options if I can? Um, Adding arguments. Ah, there you go. Add object arguments. See if this works, what I added here. Compiler for C supports argument W error in conversion, yes. Okay, now let's see if it works. Um, compile, yes. Ninja build stopped because some subcommands failed. I assume that that's. Yes, it works! Yoohoo! It fails. So if I just make this 11. Oh. I need to rerun that, I guess. Created. And this time it should be working. This time it worked. Uh, it works. Okay, so what's missing? Uh, my phone build needs to change from C11 to GNU11 because some. I'm still upset about that. And the reason why I'm upset about setting GNU11 there is because there is nothing. STRDAP is not a GNU extension, it's a POSIX extension, right? Why would I need to use GNU11 for my compiler when. The This should work with anything that supports C11 or even C99, like because honestly speaking, all of this is C99. It's not GNU11. Why do I need to say that this is a GNU extension? Why? Like, it makes no sense. It just makes no sense. Mm. 
more reasons to get rid of all of this because honestly this code is awful I'm not setting it. That's the thing, like, it, no, 11 will set POSIX C source. C11 doesn't. And so I don't get STR top. But if you look at these, like, STR end up is also POSIX C source. And like, If I was using the str dup a or str n dup a, I understand. But why isn't... I don't think I'm supposed to set the POSIX C source. That's the thing. Like, I, I thought that C99 is a, a super set of POSIX C. It just feels so wrong if SDR DAP is not part of a normal C standard. And also, like if you check SDR SDR, SDR SDR is part of C99. STR end up is POSIX 1 2008, STR DAP is POSIX 1 2001. How is this not part of C11? How is this, how is STR DAP not part of C11? I guess I can just ask, hey, I just want POSIX, but... I guess... Uh, global arguments... Uh, But we'll ask a newer version of POSIX C source. Globally. Oh, and I need to tell it I want this for everything C. Yeah, that worked. And it didn't explode in my face. This is... Baked language still has not. Does this mean STR DAP doesn't exist on Windows if I use MSPC? I mean, that will be quite the thing, right? Did I configure Travis on this branch to build? Yeah, Travis is set up. This compiler clang and GCC, so I guess it does the split. So 
Sorry, fair point. MSPC doesn't support C. Wait, but does that mean that STRDAP is not part of a C++ interfaces either? Okay, never mind. Um, It opened on the wrong, like on wrong, on the right thing, but not the one I wanted now. C11 and C17 standards, C17. STDC version to 2011, 12L. I guess I should install the SDK myself eventually. I never installed it for my Windows development. <sighs> I guess I will install that. No, it doesn't. I guess we'll eventually get to the point of I will stream me trying to get some paper to build on Windows, but. For now, let's finish the Maison port, shall we? Okay. What did we say is the thing? POSIX. It's request or requirement, it's good. like I'm requesting it, but I'm also ensuring it's there by, by wint conversion, so who knows, require. I mean, that's kind of awful, but... That's configuration, that generates the configure file, that's not what I want. Compiler properties, that's code compile, compile and link. That's a function exist. We also want to make sure that there is a function. Like a rep header in the prefix argument, that's fine.
there's something that doesn't make sense for me on this thing, but I'll check. Funny thing is, I am fairly sure that I have a blog post in which I complained about GCC not having a way to enable some very deep important uh, warnings as errors. And I remember yeah, this was a thing. Let me see. Was it in conversion? But was one of them as well. And at least now it seems to be working, so that's good. Okay. Well, let's see. Yeah, double error implicit declaration. Oh, there you go. Return makes integer from pointer without a cast. Yeah, sounds like this one was fixed because this is the doubling correction in conversion what I'm using here. Passing an argument from from incompatible pointer type. I love how the comment was like, it is possible to disable warnings, like, but the problem was not about disabling warnings, the problem was about enabling them as errors, but that's alright, it just took them six years nearly from when I reported, like, no, almost exactly six years since I reported this to it being fixed, yay, it was fixed though, so that's good. Good, okay, happy about that part. Um, okay. So this means that on GCC4 this will still like have an implicit conversion. Um, but at least it's something. Now the next step from this will be, can we actually add or out if we can't find that particular function? So um, before we do that, if cc dot um, as function str dot in if not that and if not that if not that um boom Ah, <sighs> 
to 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 how do I report an error? Adding arguments install installing manual running Mason Mason sample. Reference manual. Functions. Error. There you go. That should be removed eventually, I will say. I don't want... Yeah, that doesn't work, right? If, that, if not... That's a bit easy, if not... Yeah, this fails. Um, that's interesting. Mason dash p gives me the doesn't give me the verbose. Is you confused dash p? No. How do I get these verbose? Maybe debug. But doesn't help either. Okay, debug doesn't help. Um, Oh, I should have just checked the log, right? Okay, I'm opening it in the editor. Uh, why does it fail? No definition for building STR dot found in the prefix. What? Okay, I stared up and declared and it utters out. And it uses stdc11. Okay, it's interesting that the D file offset bit is always there. That's interesting, very, very interesting. Um, do, 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 do. get a Mason object
Okay, maybe I can do this get compiler C and I think I can do arcs and force the compiler to include that. Maybe I can't. Following keyword arguments can be used. Okay, so maybe I need to add it to the has function rather than here. Let's see if this works. Yeah, okay, this worked. It still feels absurdist to have to check for functional steer dot, but okay. And also the fact that they had global arguments doesn't work for the compiler. Again. But that doesn't sound right. But I'll take one thing at a time, I guess. Okay. to also add this to the same commit because it's easier okay now this part is done give me just a second to grab something to drink and i'll be right back meantime you are back with jetty and i'll be back And I'm back with a fleet column like her jet I her. Uh, where were we? Yes, coding. So Okay, the Mason build is getting a little bit more complicated, but that's not too bad. Do tries external commas per comma unit text. Now Again, I don't. I don't like the fact that the build system is insisting on talking about unit tests because what I have here are not unit tests. 
what I have here is integration tests. And I just want to wire those in. So let me see. Things that I can test by adding the test to it. Mm, what? Oh, I can build the test based on executable. And that does not help. Because if I try to integrate this with Yeah, using Maison as a test runner. Doesn't sound like it's going to help me. And the documentation for the tests on the Maison site is also fairly confusing, I want to say. The reference is a bit more useful, it seems. Okay, so it can be an external program object found by find program. Okay, does malloc perturb for the mallocking? I don't care about that. The environment I will be needing. Let's try to do this integration with Maison test, despite me not particularly very, being very happy about it. Plain program. So Sphinx build is going to be required for the building because we always want to build the man page. Eventually we'll want to build the whole documentation as RST, but I haven't done that. PyTest is a fine program. PyTest required is not, like it's not going to be required. So if not PyTest.found, Dot found. Pa -pa -pa -pa. Oh, here I'm still looking at the other window here. Oh, where we go? Yes, dot found. Uh, is there a warning function? Yes, there is a warning function. Warning. So this is going to be test. It's going to be by test and probably just pass it as an argument. 
BBB so that I get an output. And then I want an environment. Um, export test on paper binary. And I need the executable I just built. So the way I do that is I define that executable there. So executable is a function, yes. Which returns a build target. So mm. this thing should have object method. It's a build target. Full path. Okay. But the function, yes, it is. So let me unset task on paper binary. Oh yeah, and I need to pass it the tests on paper from there. So um, do I get the source path? Do I? Project source directory. full path and if I look what the other environment I was looking here to inject I forgot now <laughs> um, emgsrc deer and golden deer and both of those are currently the same thing there so This will be that, and we'll do these plus tests. And then the second part, the second one, the golden and the sources will be changed afterwards so that they are slightly different. Okay, RMRF and Mason will deal. Mason C do that. Good. And now I want test, I guess. The fine by test, yes. It may be running, it may not, yes, that's... Yeah, it is running. Test suite timeout, because it just wait for 30 seconds. Uh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Seriously? Mason, this time you got to be kidding me? Why is that a default timeout of 30 seconds? If timeout is less than zero, the test has an infinite duration, yeah. I definitely want to, for that to be the infinite duration because it's going to take forever. So, timeout minus one. Uh, 
and I need 0 0.57 for that. Oh, seriously? This thing, but I'll do that later. I guess the dash BDD doesn't help because it's trying to do that while being running. Also, funny story, yesterday here we got 30 degrees in the winter garden. Those who are not aware because they have not had to deal with the uh, typical London real estate bullshit thing is like kind of like a veranda or a balcony. It's like, I guess most people will call it a balcony. Um, and essentially it's an in between the actual flat and the outside it's fully closed so it feels like it should be a normal room but it isn't because it's cold because it has no uh, insulation now the thing is this room should have insulation and it does have insulation most of the time but the window that the window slash door that goes into the winter garden doesn't actually seal properly so right now i have a proper wind going through it so i'm going to have to take down the curtain so that's the noise you're hearing right now. Because otherwise, let's freeze. Because it's 14 degrees today versus the 30 yesterday. And to give you an idea of how strong that wind is, the fully lowered curtain stays 5 centimeters away from the wall. Because there is no, like the door doesn't actually close fully. Yeah, it's taking a very long while to run the whole thing. I should do parallel next. So let's check Travis as well. I need to make sure that this thing, yeah, it needs meson. Uh, what one did? Which one did we say? Zero five seven. Yeah, the test pass, and this is going to be needed. Can I check minimum version of Meson? Building object Meson object to, to, to version. Yes. Um, can I do a version check? Is there no way to do a version check? Oh yeah, version compare, that's the thing. Let's start that immediately then. If not Maison version version compare.
zero fifty seven error Mason zero fifty seven version. No, I don't need the colon is not Python. Project for so let's start with our project and paper check for the version of Mason and then continue. Awesome, this part is done. You who okay, because those will be needed for the tests to run. And those things over there allowed me to run the tests that way. So that part is also awesome, that part is done. Okay, now let's go back for a moment to the browser. And that's to, to, to. I test parallel, we say, right? I test parallel it's simply a plugin mm, I test X list I don't care. I have a feeling that I want something slightly more involved than that. So if I do PyTest... There is a way for PyTest to show me what actually I get there instead of just get, of running the logs, right? Collect only, yes. PyTest collect only tests and paper, and paper test of py. This one will tell me all the various functions for, that are in it. Did anybody do Mason PyTest? Did anybody try an integration between Python uh, PyTest and Mason? This is unit tests and integration tests have been run separately. I can collect the Py test tests either per module or per function and Function will work better, I will say, in my need. Go back to the coding window. So if I do, like, let's say, collect only here, collect only test and paper test is one thing. If I do this and then I ask for this function here, yeah, not such, not such far. Oh, dash k. I want. Mm, sorry. Wrong expression. Um, if I do just function there, it doesn't help. And if I do this, yeah, it works. Like it does. Like it, it explodes in my face right now. But like I need the functions. Um, I know there is a way to collect the PyTest, test, and then I can like add multiple tests and have Mason just run them in parallel. But most importantly than that, like each one of them will be reported separately. 
and that way I don't need to have it parallel inside and the external afterwards and I can collect more of them and like, split them in multiple tests afterwards. I'm really scared because what I'm thinking of doing right now If I could just go and have a function that returns me mm. I guess what I could be doing will be integrating this with Mason and not trying to just come up with a way around it myself for now because essentially what I'm what I'm trying to do is I want for it to load a PyTest suite and just say hey this is the suite just run it for me and I don't want to care about like in the suite split it and I could do that but it will be quite messy for me to go and just do it myself this should really just like the test switch should be just defined by Mason so I would like to have the option of just saying hey I just want to grab everything together and not care um, So this really should be running like in a newer version. Like this should be included in a newer version of Mason eventually instead of being me hacking through it. So let me just do it the silly way with PyTest parallel and then I'll figure out how to integrate this correctly. Because yes, I could just set up the environment and then like my, I, I don't need the dash BVV there at that point because I just need to get the output at the end of it um, and this sets the, the whole environment up for me so I don't need to worry about any of that awesome um, yeah okay and if I just want to include PyTest parallel I just the workers auto will do the right thing but I think that's going to be a bit of so I'm going to use PyTest workers auto for my own thing locally, but I'm not adding it to the requirement. Um, so when I do export, Yeah, 
like this will run the whole thing in parallel is much faster of course it's running out now because the file is not there uh, he's there I'm not sure if you can hear the fans actually start spinning up because I know I'm asking for multiple yeah, It's actually funny, I, I could feel the CPU spinning up pretty much when I run all of them in parallel. The interesting is, is okay, that it does have some problem with the output, clearly. And they wonder why it says 16 workers processed collected eight items. And I, you only have eight tests why are you using 16 workers i don't know i don't care still is faster than running all of them in series and that's all right all the integration here for the versions is known now i need to do two more things one is integrating into things so that the test actually runs um, because this does the compile and install but it doesn't do the test uh, But we'll do it, so that part will work. The other thing I want to do is now I need to finish this, like make sure that all of this is copied over. So the way I'm going to do this, like these are the no override, right? Yeah, the G1, G2, G3, I can delete. This one can go. And then I'll give them better names, but for now the A1 or oh, A1 is gone as, as well, so delete A1. B1, I want B1, B2, B3. Diff run test B1 tests run test B2. Uh, 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 we not have no oh, that diff we okay color diff yeah that will do uh, B two combined color black and white processing this uses different source images and different output images so let's do that now B two Combine color black and white, no processing. It's golden B2, obviously. Result path is results B2. Actually, no, I'm going to change that for B1 as well and A1 as well. Like the results path is just then path result. And the reason for that is because that way I can copy it without having to worry. But if you remember from last time I did this, I added a fixture for the golden deer for the image source and then the temp path is, is a standard fixture from PyTest but will be different for each test executed there, so I don't need to care about the name of it. But by doing it this way, I don't have to worry about what the input was. So this is 3 and 5 rather than 3 and 4 for B2. And the rest stays the same because it's VN input. Um, and as I was saying, dash N means that it is everything. So actually, no processing one here. It's, I'll keep it because it was nice to find a bug. But it's 
that, that the dash n means no processing for anything. Um, and I'll update the documentation for it as well eventually. So that was B2 and it should be that way. And do B3. And yes, I'm just diffing the, the previous two versions so I know which input was where. Um, so yeah, this one it has again B3. Change the name, this is combine. This is was combined gray and black and white. It uses image source, I think it's it's four and five, yes. And the golden is B3, of course. So if I now just do the same, I test collect only will list B2 B3. And if I do by test, pdd um, test on the paper test dash k test b, you should run b1 b2. Oh. And yes, while running it locally, I can use the test on paper binary locally without having to rebuild the thing all the time. Okay, yes, we pass. Good. So now I can remove and test, non test, B, everything. It's all right, we are gone. C1, black sheet, background color. Um, that's the C1, C2. Uh, explicit. Oh, these are completely different one from the other. I don't know why they're called that way. So let's not call them C1. Or rather, let's keep the C1 there, but let's call it black shit. Background. Or rather, shit background black. Again, this will just be result. And now C2 is a completely different one um, because it still has the sheet size. I think that's the only thing that connects one from the other and they are they all use the same sheet thingy, but this is pre-shift, so test pre-shift. And this is going to be explicit shifting. It uses the same image source, the result is random, I don't care. Golden needs to be C2. And then instead of being sheet size A4, sheet background black, it's sheet size A4. And then it's going to be pre shift. And then it is minus 5 cm min uh, plus 9 cm, or rather 9 cm. Okay. And if I run that as test, click shift, it should do the right thing. As long as it doesn't crash. Yeah, it passed. Okay. So that one is easy. And C3, I think, is also a little different. No, it's a different. Explicit minus one size shifting. I don't know why it was test pre shift both and pre shift. That one is. I don't know why it's called C3, let's be honest. Um, negative shift. Explicit minus one size shifting. I don't know. Pre shift minus one. As you can tell, I don't really understand much of the tests that are going on over here because they're all part of the original code. 
and that's all right um, in the sense of I don't I don't expect to know how the background with the, the, the main internals of the algorithm work it's a complicated algorithm that I don't know um, I'm leaving that to whoever and wrote it and if anybody else wants to understand and, and add more to it I'm more than happy to review and understand it that's not my specialty but my specialty is making sure that everything around it works and that I can do okay. now D, E and F are the only ones that are missing did I forget D1? Did I not port D1? Crop to shit size. Okay, I didn't. D1. Fit to shit size. Crop to shit size. Oh, because the D1 were just pretty much the same. Uh, okay, let's do that then. Let's, let's close the terminal for a moment. Move this to the bottom. And yes, I'm, I'm going to do this for the next, let's call it 10 minutes, 15 minutes. There isn't going to be much else happening beside this. And then either next week or uh, week after next, depending on how timings and everything work together. Well, it depends. Because if, if, if week after next, both me and my wife have the vaccine, like I got it yesterday, if, my wife should be getting in the next block as my carrier, so hopefully. Um, once that's the case and the lockdown is lifted, I will spend the entire weekend out just taking pictures of squirrels, I don't care. Until then, I will be here probably next week just going back to this thing and see if I can get this in a state where we can release this sometime. Um, as on paper 6.2 but it's not the case just yet uh, let's not call it that one let's call it test stretch all right I think d3 d2 and d1 let's start with d1 again let, let's keep them in order d1 is all of these are doing like shit size calculations so test shape size the d1 is crop that shit crop this part stays the same i'm going to copy the same thing here is going to be pretty much the same because I just need to parameterize the golden path and that's going to be D1 for this one and this is EMGSRC3 but it starts with result uh, random paper and sheet size 20 cm 10 cm and no more of those okay D2 is test sheet fit. Fit to sit to sheet size is still use the same input. It's called in D2 here. And the size it's size 20 cm 10 cm. Isn't it identical? Oh this is size, not sheet. Again, I don't like some of the command line of this tool, let's ignore that for now. And then the third one is a stretch, which uses pretty much the same thing. I'm going to copy exactly the same once again, and shift stretch. Free stretch to shift size, still EMG free, result. And this is D3, and instead of being size, it's stretch. Okay. 
then we got e1, e2, and e3. e1, we have it over here, splitting two page layout into output e2 and e3 they are pretty thick e2 and d3 have slightly different but about the same so let me take e1 again this becomes e2 now change the text And again, I don't need to do this part over here, which is awesome. Um, layout, double, output pages, two. Source path is... That's ah, a different page with two. Input and output wildcard. Okay, this one has an explicit... Like it doesn't actually have an input um, wildcard, just have... That is right now, yeah, that's the uh, output wildcard only, very well. And the rest should be literally the same, except that I expect only two of them instead of six. Which is... Well, that should do what I want. Well, okay, this one has results, E1, so I'm going to just call it results. I'm going to remove this E1 from here as well, because that way I can use the same. do the same on one above because results dash results dash results dash and e2 is done and you want like these two are pretty much the same except that I'm using neither input nor output so I'm going to go for this here again and then calling this e3 e3 with explicit result path one result path two and this is going to be result two and this is going to be result one result path one result path two okay and yes, around the format because. And this is. Is that always going to golden A1? No, no what's between golden H2 and golden A? Are we golden E1, E2, and E3 the same actually? Terminal. Split terminal. Uh, golden E star. Uh, dot BBM. Golden E1, Golden E201, they have the same size, but that doesn't say anything because they're bitmaps. Are they the same files? They are, aren't they? Yeah, E1, E2, and E3 are the same file. E1, O2, E2, O2, E3, O2. And the same thing for the E1 as well. And the reason for that is because that only changes the input parameter and E1 is the only one that has more than um, one entry. And so this will work because I'm looking for golden E1 on E3 and E2. And I think I'll just do that and remove the other two. So I have fewer files that I need to keep with me. Uh, yes. So yeah, that, that's fun. To, instead of doing the full thing because I have an explicit results one and two there, I'm going to just do the same, which is going to be as uh, compare images golden golden deal golden deal path f golden no I don't need f um, golden e one and there's zero one, I think. Yeah. BBM. Result equal 
open this old path 1, last one little by little 5, and then I'm going to do the same for little by little 2. I'm going to do it that way instead of doing it 4 for the third one, because that's what the, the third one is explicit about. And now, show terminal, terminal. Focus terminal, I think it is. Yeah. Uh, bypassed. Past E. I can run through it once and then I remove the extra files as well. And eventually, once some paper will be in a state where I can release this and stop boring everybody with me just dealing with this over streams, I will have something different to get to. Um, it may or may not involve the wormhole that I was talking about. I just end up writing some of it. I also do have authorization now to release some of my Sale adapter boards um, designs. One of which I sent already, that actually more than one of which I already sent to Foom. Um, but I haven't tested one of them. <laughs> they are some silly boards that just take the, um, like they have space for connecting directly um, to the Sale logic adapter. And on the other side, they have TRS like double TRS, so you can man in the middle of the TRS connection, which was more interesting when there were a bunch of mobile phone accessories that use the um, audio jack to transmit data, but they're still handy for me because I have a bunch of things that use TRS for serial ports. Um, there is one which is a um, combined style adapter and um, USB to UART. And there is one that has a full RS232 serial port, including the Max232, well, it's not the Max232, because I used a different chip for that one that does the whole the whole uh, DE9 connections at once. Um, that one is cool, I have nothing to try it with, um, but eventually I guess I will. The tests pass, which means the extra golden files are not needed, and I actually rewrote most of these tests now into like 17 tests here and they work so that's good git rm tests run tests b tests run tests e run test e and then test golden e two three star so but to give you an idea of what we are doing here just to get the tests to work can remove core as well um, all of these are gone. Now that rem remains F1, F2, F3. Let me close this again. F1. F2 and F3. Uh, this is F1. F2 is... Uh, probably easier to read this way. Uh, and F3, same thing, I think. Okay, this is very similar. I don't. Did I write some of these tests maybe? Because something is silly here. Like, these have a different order of. Arguments. So, yeah, F1, F2, 
and F3. Like F2 and F3 are pretty much the same, just different. So like it changes what the result is instead of being a wildcard or a format string, it doesn't do that. And this one has an additional end sheet one on F1, which doesn't really matter. So again, this should be just results results because we don't care about calling them EF1 or anything else like even the EMG SRC are no longer important at this point and are these using the same golden? We're using different goldens <sighs> don't tell me MD5, MD5, Golden, F, PBM. And they are the same file once again. Git RM, S, Golden, F, 2, star, test, Golden, F, 3, star, test, Golden, F, 11, Test golden F PBM and the license as well. This is slightly easier because it's not F11, like the F11 again. Hysterical, historical reasons, as they say, it's fine. Uh, okay, this is F1, let's do F2 and F3. Oh, yeah, and F1, now it's not it doesn't F. And we say that between one and the other. I'm putting the two inputs explicitly and I somehow removing add sheet one but so right but it's a bit strange never mind that part add two source path it's going to be E001, this is number one, and then there's going to be a number two, which is E002. The output path, result path, everything is fine. This one changes to one and two. And then the F3 is the same, except I'm explicitly and then I'm just passing results I'm passing it result let, let, let's call it this way so here I'm doing result path I no longer have output path I only have result path everything else stays legally the same so let's go back to the terminal um, test F and I'm going a little over the two hours that I originally planned. Sorry, folks. But we are nearly there, then I can push this um, and we will be getting close. going to be so much easier from now on to maintain this thing instead of the mess of like 
I'm not saying that this is not a mess now, but it is a mixture of Maison and Sphinx build and PyTest and like And I actually hope I can get more of these into a decent shape. Also, for those who are curious, the uh, wormhole firmware image, yeah, firmware, not that much of a firmware image, the installation of the wormhole thing for the NanoPy Nino 3 that I was talking about earlier, which I did on a 64 gigs um, SD card, compressed down to less than 600 megabytes. Not bad. This is just bzip2. I could have probably compressed it much more on a better option, but like this one was available. Um, 600 max is enough, I just need to get it to my mother's together with all the things. Then the next step is going to be how the heck do I get that into a macOS? Um, like how do I hide that from macOS? Because I know on Windows I would just use Balina Etcher, but of course I don't have the same option here. <laughs> I'll figure something out. For now, it's not important. On the bright side, hey, the test passed, and that's awesome. So that's done. Um, I can remove the tests run test. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, I want to force remove all because I was just trying to make sure that it would look the same. That's all. Um, awesome. Now I need to tie this up so that we can submit it and then I will close it down there. So did I have a default if I didn't pass the environment variables I think in the fixtures did I? Yeah, test slash. Um, and if I sum tests mg png sort None of these are duplicates now, all of these are unique, that's fine. So, um, KDL tests source images tests images or see everything test source images and this becomes source. Same here, the class tasks, class source, interest. And the golden, that's going to be tricky, so I'm going five some golden star dot n, um, n. I don't care about the license files, the license files should be the same across them, but the, the PDMs and PNMs should be different. And these golden G1 and G2 are the same, so I should remove G2. Everything else is different. Golden G1. Do I not even have golden G1 and golden G2 used? What were golden G1 and G2? Like those are the, oh, it was the G the test over writing and I'm not actually, yeah, because I'm doing no processing. Yeah, this was just the don't process anything and overwrite. That's why the golden G1 and G2 are not even in use. And G3 either. Also, I can remove those. And now I can do tests. Um, golden. Well, stores images, right? Golden star, golden star dot star tests, golden images. Better, and then here I'm going to change this one to be 
the images and then the same Amazon build asks golden images and again it should probably fix this in a different way but for now it's fine and I can remove compare image because I don't need that git and test compare image with a bit of a massacre but okay git add Travis now Amazon build git rm tests run tests a one of the sage I don't need that anymore git add tests and paper tests um Yeah, I'm not set on the name, like the um, paper test there is a bit strange as a name, but it will do for now. Um, and I'm going to add to git ignore. So I don't need these anymore because I'm not... B. Okay, so deer stamp is no longer needed because we are not using auto tools. Compare image is not longer needed because we don't need it. Um, the image source PBM, PGM, PPM is from when I couldn't read the PNG directly. So those are also gone. The prologue, I don't actually know why it was there. The results are no longer written there. And these are the log results from the build that doesn't exist anymore. And a paper and the man page cannot be built there anymore. So all of those can go. But I need to add tests. Um, by cache directory because that one is new. And if I just get status, everything is fine, boom, good, perfect, a bunch of things went away, a bunch of things got compressed. Uh, yeah, pytest. Let's run one last pytest manually first, and then I'll unset the environment and redo this with Mason. And then I can commit this and push this to GitHub and I'm done. And if that works, well, I need to update the... Yeah, funny enough, that's like, release 6.2 was expected in 2013 I had not done this in 2014, the last release was um, 6.1 in 2014, now it's 2021, so seven years later, it's time to make a new release. Um, yeah, it will be, to be released this year, and going to be new release waiting for, like, re release 6 is the first one that used libd slash ffmpeg for the um, input and output and now we have like you see like release 5 was the one that actually had some change to the interpolation oh that's shit crop shit and stretch failed okay so some tests failed i screwed something up i guess shit crop D1, D2, D3. Those are the original ones. I'm not going to stay longer than this. I'll check what the address are this time. I'll fix them. I'll push some of this off camera, most likely. Um, we are getting there. So maybe next week or during the week, we'll see. I'll do a small stream of like prepare this for release and I'll make the release. Um, I also still think I should rewrite the documentation to be buildable um, with restructured text so that we can build it as HTML and just copy it in the install path. Um, and maybe I'll make a non paper website one day with we'll just get the output there or maybe I'll put it on read the docs. Um, maybe, we'll see. Let's wait to the things to run.
Okay, technically I could just not even bother with rewriting methods restructured text but using common mark for them. It might work actually, I may try that. Still waiting for the tests to finish so I can read the failure for those three. I should probably have used the parallel stuff. Three should be fairly easy, so I'm right, looking for golden D one, two, and three. Did I forget to move them? Looking for golden D1 ppm, golden D2 ppm. What did I do with the golden speed? Did I get them wrong? Or did I just mistype it? It's status. And I'm golden D. Where ppm? So I moved ppm to ppm. So maybe I just did it wrong. Those are very names. Yeah, I think I may have just copied it wrong. Yeah, I call it PBM instead of PPM. I also need to write some documentation to explain how all of this works, of course. Particularly like, for the next package or this, like, without having to repeat everything. Okay. Yeah, I can definitely feel it spin up everything when I run this stuff in parallel. I'm sure that there is a Twitch streamer overlay that would allow me to just put like the, the, the fan speed and the graphs and all that kind of stuff on the stream when I do this, um, which probably will work great for things like this where I'm just using WSL to build the stuff, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, nearly done, nearly done. 
I'm finished now. Yep, all passed. Um, let me get one of the other terminals that don't have anything in the environment. Nothing in the environment besides the PWD. Um, I'm going to remove the build here, Amazon build here. Compound. And running the byte test. Okay, um, I'm going to assume that this one will work. And if that's the case, I will clean this up to at least push it to GitHub so that I can reference it in the video later. And then otherwise, I'm just going to come back like either during the week or on um, next weekend and bring this for the next release. Maybe a bit rough around the edges as a Amazon build, but it's better than the stuff we have right now. And I may just take a quick look to get the deprecated FFmpeg stuff taken care of as well, because otherwise it's a bit of a mess. Um, but yeah, like this, this next coming weekend, um, Maison build as master or main on the GitHub page. So, yay! Yeah, I'm not going to wait for it to finish here before saying goodbye, because it's going to take good 10 minutes at this point. Folks, see you next time, and look forward to get the stuff on GitHub later today. See ya!